introduce the, uh, the section of the course that I call market structures. It's going to be a look in microeconomics, a look at the level of competition and various for the businesses in terms of their profit and for you and I, the consumers, in terms of how much we are advantaged or disadvantaged by that level of competition. Now, when we do this, we're going to look at four different market structures. Perfect competition, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, and monopoly. There's a sliding scale there from a lot to very little to no competition. We'll go through each one as we go through the course, but today, right now, what I want to introduce is the first model called perfect competition, and this is the first lecture on that perfect competitive or perfectly competitive model. We're going to describe a theoretical model, a model that really doesn't exist in its pure form, but it's a standard to which we will compare every industry and say how competitive are they compared to the extreme, compared to the perfectly competitive model. Now to build this perfectly competitive model, we make four unrealistic assumptions. But these assumptions give the model a lot of strength and they give us a good basis for comparison as we look at the real world. What are the four assumptions then behind perfect competition? The first assumption is that this industry, all of these sellers combined together called the industry, are very, very small businesses. Each one producing a very, very small amount of the total output of the market. And within the industry, there are an enormous amount of buyers, each one of whom buys only a small amount in the market. So we say our first assumption is that there is a large number of very small buyers. There are no Walmarts. We'll come back and see the significance of this as we go along. <coughs> Our second assumption is that the sellers of this product are all selling a homogeneous good. Homogeneous meaning the good, the service, the good, is identical one for one for every seller. It is identical in the mind of the buyer, that to the buyer, uh, a gallon of milk is a gallon of milk is a gallon of milk. It doesn't matter about the brand name on it or who's selling it, that every product is identical. So we say homogeneous products. Now just think right there. If every product's the same, how would you decide which one to buy? And the, the answer is, well, I'd buy the cheapest one. Why would I pay more money for the same thing? Third assumption, this is a very competitive industry. It's very easy to go into business and to go out of business. We say there is easy entry into and exit from the industry. Now, again, this is a very simplified model. But imagine in this industry, if you wanted to become a doctor, what would it take? Well, basically, you'll hang a sign up on your door and say, hey, our Strickland doctor, y'all come on in. Now, what would happen? Would I be successful? Would I be competitive? Not unless I was a darn good doctor, because if I didn't provide a good quality service, word would get around, and well, once I really damaged a few people, I doubt that too many people would continue to come back. But the industry is designed so that it's really easy to go into competition. And we'll see an example of that as we go along. The fourth assumption here, and it is absolutely key to this model, is that there is perfect information. That means perfect information on the part of the buyers and the sellers. The buyers know the price that is charged by every seller. They know how to judge the quality of the product. They know the technical aspects of the product. They are very completely knowledgeable, so they can judge when one product is poor quality and they will avoid it. And they can tell where the best price is because they have complete information. Sellers also have complete information. And so they're aware of any changes in the price that any other firms institute. Now these assumptions, again, they're a little realist, unrealistic, but they build a very powerful model. And the outcome of this model for the sellers 
is not a happy world. It's a world where you don't control your price. And the first time a competitor is able to reduce his price because he brought his costs down, you either match him or you lose customers because your prices are still above his. So this constant stress for the seller of keeping your price at a low and competitive level with all the other sellers. Okay, keep these assumptions in mind because as we go through this discussion of market structures, we're going to ask what happens when you violate one of these assumptions, when it is no longer true? What happens to the level of competition in the market and what does that mean for buyers and sellers? Incidentally, if you are a buyer in this market, how, do, how would you like it? The good news is that competition is going to keep prices very low. Perfect information is going to keep quality very high. You won't have shoddy producers out there producing low quality goods because we'll stop buying from them. Competition is generally very good for the buyers and very difficult for the sellers. Okay, That's the first part of perfect competition, the four assumptions.